Good evening, Saitlanders. How are you? Wow, what a day. It's been a long day and a hot day and I've been up to all sorts of interesting things. Um, and so I'm a little bit, yeah, if you, if, if you find it frustrating that I'm not, that I'm struggling to talk smoothly, that I'm clearly uitgeput, then don't watch the video. It's not, uh, this is not some uh, vitally important video. I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of interrelated subjects that kind of begin with, um, with this, uh, this article from News 24. And the, the, the article is behind a paywall, but it doesn't matter. The story is told in just a few words. It's from this morning on News 24, and it's written by one Kyle Cowan. And the headline reads, Kusile Crisis, ESCOM in urgent bid to prevent 220 meter tall chimney collapse, comma, restore much needed megawatts. Now, the much needed megawatts part, yeah, we don't worry, we, we know. We know there's a shortage of megawatts, and we know that at any given time, there is always a promise or a claim to restore or be restoring or planning to restore or intend restoring or hoping to restore megawatts. Thank you. The interesting part is the 220 meter tall uh, chimney tower collapse. The African, this is what I comment on it when I placed it on my foreign group, WhatsApp group. <coughs> the African National Congress's non-racial and non-working power station is falling down. Oh, dear me, but it never ends with these buffoons. It was meant to be completed in 2015, that is to say the, the whole power station. It is now 2023, but the place is incomplete eight years later. And what is complete is already collapsing. I went on to say, we need somebody like one of the great American comedic authors to write a book about the past 28 years. John Irving, who wrote Hotel New Hampshire, would have us all weeping with laughter at the exploits of the ANC. It's a genre of literature that that Americans have mastered. I'm not a great fan of Amer English. In fact, I don't like it. <coughs> and not only do I prefer proper English, but I prefer good, authentic, proper English. So my standards are very, very far removed from American popular writing. But the Americans as far as I'm concerned, have done the best job in recent years, recent decades, of the satirical novel, of satirizing, of caricaturing. You know, uh, those cartoons, if English is not your first language, a caricature is a cartoon in The Citizen. You know those ones, the big ones, making fun of a politician or whatever. And John Irving wrote a novel called The Hotel New Hampshire, which is about a guy who inherits a hotel. Uh, I forget, I read it 30 years ago. But he inherits a hotel, or he buys a little hotel with inheritance money or something. And it turns out to be occupied by people in distress. The one character is, for instance, 
a woman with such severe acne that she develops, you know, in, in puberty, in childhood, when the acne begins, a psych psychosis. And she ends up wearing a bear suit. And it always lives in this bear suit. So he has all of these people who are damaged, who are hurt by life. And he doesn't have the heart to kick them out. And he ends up learning to love them. He and his family learn to love them and to cope with these, you know, people whose behavior is bizarre. <clears throat> In different ways for different reasons. And this author, John Irving, as many authors, uh, Kurt Vonnegut is another one, have been able to do brilliant satire, to, to mock without cruelty, to find the funniness in, in something, to find the comedy in it, and to exploit it beautifully. And we need an American satirist to come to South Africa and write a book about the buffoonery of the ANC. It is it's a, a golden opportunity. It's sorely lacking. It should have happened a long time ago that some brilliant South African or other author such as these American satirists wrote truthfully about these Mampara, these Pampuna, these Mukhus. Imagine the... Look, if it was a house, you could say, ah, oh, RDP housing, disgusting job, typical African National Congress, corrupt, the money was stolen, they mixed too much sand in the cement, the house is not yet built, and the walls are already falling down. That has happened across the length and the breadth of South Africa for nigh on 30 years. And everything else that they've done has begun to deteriorate before it ever reached maturity. Everything to which they have set their hand. But for pity's sake, this is a power station. Unit 6 is not complete and the chimney... And then we've got K.W. Miller. You know the guy. We've spoken enough about him. Talking about the farmers shouldn't plant this year. I mean, his reasoning is absolutely stupid. It is what's called meretricious. Um, there's another word uh, that eludes me for the moment. That means that it may have a, a superficial value. But once you scratch at it, it, it disappears. And that comes from the uh, Afrikaners would call it the high English, I think, word. You know, I'm speaking colloquially. If I'm sitting at a place with some people, they might say, oh, that's, you know, that's very high English, that. Oh, I didn't understand that word. And I would always say, yeah, you know, I have a, I've had a, a habit since childhood, a lifelong habit of speaking this way. So what would you like to call it? Superior English, if you like, if you prefer. Word for a prostitute is a meretrix. Um, so the, the commonality between the two ideas is that if you scratch away the paint, the superficial of a meretrix, what do you get underneath? It's just a common, you know? <clears throat> So, it's a, his is a meretricious argument. 
he says, the farmers have been contacting us to ask whether we should plant this year. And we say no, because uh, uh, everything's going to go to pot. You know, you don't have electricity. You can't keep your milk cold if you're a dairy farmer. Uh, <clears throat> you can't water if you're an irrigation crop farmer and so on. So why take the risk? Fair enough. But what he's saying, if you just scratch at that argument for 1,2 seconds, he's telling the farmers of South Africa to starve the population to death. Not deliberately, not willfully. They're acting in their interests. But still, he should be dispassionate. He should be not thinking only of the farmers but also other people. Unless he's a farmer himself and he can only see it from the farmer's point of view. But he's not a South African farmer. It's a daft argument. Yeah, you should all stop planting and milking. Because <clears throat> you're going to lose all your tom. And the country will go without food. He then says it'll be the ANC's problem to import. Huh? Are you... Really? You're going you're gonna to create famine conditions in this country and then leave it up to the African National Congress and the United Nations to ensure that my kids get a square meal? The man is on crack cocaine. I always tell people there are only ever three possible explanations for a bad thing. The one is or bad behavior, bad in a human being. The one is stupidity. And that stupidity can be induced by drunkenness, by a fall on the floor hitting your head. It can be congenital, congenital, a person can be born, you know, less gifted than another person. Therefore, they may not be able to do a good job of being a nuclear scientist. But the one explanation is that. The other is willful, sorry, the second is willful perversity. <clears throat> so when you're being intentionally bad. The third <coughs> is demonic possession. And I mean this. As a Christian, you must take me very seriously. And if you think about it long enough, you'll discover that what I'm saying is absolutely spot on. So it can be that it's not your fault. But the net result is very bad. It can be very bad. In the other, in the next, it is your fault. You are willfully, being willfully perverse. In the third case, it's not your fault. You would otherwise not behave that way. That's why you're demon possessed. The devil feels he has to give you a little bit of help. Otherwise, you wouldn't behave that way. But you've opened a door somewhere. They talk about... This kind of possession, that kind of possession, I'm no expert. <clears throat> you have created the opportunity. You have given a, a permission, that so they say, for that demon to be in you. Nevertheless, if he wasn't in you, you would behave differently, obviously. <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice is on its last legs. <clears throat> I did... Uh, oh, never mind. I, I was just going to explain why my voice is worn today. And it's perhaps a story that somebody else would rather I didn't tell. Um, 
And K.W. Miller is either he's an idiot proposing that the farmers of South Africa should not produce and that the ANC shall take care of us or he's possessed or, and this is what I think it is it's willful perversity he is saying something eminently wicked eminently wicked knowing full well that his argument is terrible terrible because it serves an ulterior purpose <clears throat> why do I say that these two subjects are interrelated Kusil is uh, this thing what you call falling down and this guy saying what he's saying well they're connected in the sense that it's the ESCOM drama it's the African National Congress that has brought us to this pass. That has brought us to this point through the mountains. And this is starting to get very, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, If you are not yet a member of Saitlanders and you are watching this video, I urge you for the price of a hamburger, one hamburger in Johannesburg. I know I took my sons to uh, Rocco Mama's for the first time ever when I was up there for the one's birthday, excuse me. And I was horrified by the bill. I thought it was going to be peanuts. I mean, obviously, I could see the price of the items. But you order the hamburger, and then you order the sauce separately, and then the cheese, and then the this, and you lose track. And when there are five people, four people, um, and you, you're busy ordering, and you, you're busy reading, and the other person is ordering, and you, for less than the price of a hamburger, for 109 rand a month, I urge you, sign on, sign up, become a Saitlanders member, <clears throat> invest, invest in your future with the only organization that has a plan to cope with, to for for surviving the nationwide anarchy that this guy says he and his experts, insiders, I'm now using my own words. He didn't use these words, but as far as I'm concerned, this is what he meant. Intelligence sources. are discovering, have discovered, are revealing, are privy to, are aware of. They reckon they have, they know that there is a, a civil war being fomented or planned or, or prepared. That's perhaps the best word. By the ANC. Um, uh, 
And I put it to you that he may be lying. He may not even know what he's talking about. Uh, he might be a, a mountebank, a, 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 a charlatan, a pretender, a fantasist, a Baron von Munchausen. But if you look at what's happening in this country, if you look objectively, do you honestly believe for one minute that this is going to end well? And if it's going to end badly, given the size of the population, given the unemployment levels, given the, the, uh, the pre-existing tensions, given the history and the track record of violence, do you think it's going to end just a little bit badly, moderately badly, or very badly? I'm telling you that when this thing goes wrong, it's going, it's going to go wrong to a degree and an extent that is going to leave the world stunned. Thank you for watching this video. We wish you nothing but the very best for the time that lies ahead of us. Goodbye and God bless all of you.